welcome to the Mad Trio Podcast. This week we have the California Pariah, Jonathan Charney, James, the Fat Man, Stevens, and Ryan, who the hell is that, Preston, and Rob, the old guy. Hey, I'm here today. And his his drop. How do you still I've made it screw another, up? Made, made how do you still made. screw up Ryan's opening? I, I do. It's I, not, who the heck is that? It's not, who the hell is that? He keeps changing it's who it. Who the fuck just, is that? <laughs> oh, is, is yeah. that what it is? <laughs> well, one of these days I'll just have it. It's for all of yeah. Ryan's multiple personalities. <laughs> I'll have to get it right. Yeah. <laughs> so, have any of you heard of uh, UFC fighter Joaquin Buckley? And I think that's no. how you say it. It's J O A Q U I N. Um, that's how you spell Joaquin. So I well, totally yeah. did. I agree with that part, but um, no, I've never heard of him. So this dude is pretty cool. I, I, I wanted to give it a shout out to him. Doubt he's ever heard of us. Probably never will. But this guy, after having a two, was a, a two insane KO wins, still works at Walgreens. He, he, he needs a better manager. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. He says he's got two of the best knockouts of the year, but UFC rising star. Oh, this is by TMZ, by the way. Well, that, Joaquin that Buckley. Ends up there. I don't want to hear it. Joaquin Buckley says he's still not ready to quit his day job at Walgreens. Buckley first went viral for insane, for in, for an insane spinning back kick knockout of Impa Impa Kazagnage. I <laughs> close enough. Um, Dana praised him as one of the greatest finishes ever. And basically one of the reasons why is he, he doesn't want to quit his day job at 26 years old is he doesn't have, um, health insurance business. He doesn't have something else to rely upon. Mm. He says he's not, he's not ready to part ways with a big W just yet. He said, the thing is besides UFC and they're giving me the, these big checks, I still don't have a business of my own. So I need to keep working. Buckley says the fighter says it's important to him to maintain Good for him. a working mentality, work ethic. So I'm going to just keep holding down a job. Buckley says he's able to grow. Buckley says if he's able to grow a real business from his MMA exposure, he'd consider walking away from the big W. But right now, he's not going anywhere. I love this dude. I, I actually want to see his. I've got to have to see if I can dig up his fight. Um, Buckley says he's working. I'm sure, you can. Buckley says he's working on a clothing apparel line called Solid Foundation, and he's optimistic about it. But until, but quote, until my business is off the ground, we still gonna be working at Walgreens. I love that. I love the fact you yeah, have good a, for him. I, I do wonder like, Hey, like what does he do at Walgreens? Cause if he's a cashier <laughs> and he looks like he took a punch to the face, um, everybody has to wear he's masks. A sock boy. Well, everybody's got to wear masks. Wait a minute. You don't see his face. <laughs> I got to wear a mask. I don't know. I don't remember if it you says. You get away with anything. I don't remember what it says he does, <laughs> though, but that's Food true. Your teeth. Wearing the mask is definitely easier. Yeah. I, mean, I, I love the guy, though. It just huh. reminds me of the old, you know, of just some of the old school baseball players you hear. I mean, besides the fact baseball didn't pay a lot of money back in the day, but most of the guys had uh, off season jobs. So I, I don't know. Yeah. I, th I thought that was pretty badass. That used to be the way for politicians too, until they decided that they want to stay on for all their, you know, their entire life on the public dole. That is true. There's, I, you know, I remember, oh, I think it was like right before high school, I went and I looked and uh, had all the actual politicians and what their actual careers were right. before. And a, a lot of them actually went right back to that after they served their you know, most of the time it was, they just served one term in the Senate or Congress and a lot of presidents, some of them, I wouldn't say a lot. Let me just rephrase that. Not a lot, but quite a few presidents actually went back to doing either hobbies that they enjoyed or other jobs yeah. instead of, you know, still being yeah, in the public. Did, yeah. Didn't one of the Bushes go back to straight up being a fucking rancher? Yeah. Allegedly, yeah. that's what yeah. George W. Bush yeah. does. I don't know how yeah. much is true. Uh, he's actually quite, he's got quite the ranch. They they sell all kinds of exotic trees and uh, they've got quite an operation going for him. Because I know he sold his old white, the old, uh, his ranch he had when he was in the White House. I know he sold that one. Well, whatever he's got so, now, he's pretty happy. I just saw a show with him. Uh, so, Rob, have you heard of Vera? I'm sorry that you, you, you cut out. Oh, have you heard of Vera? Yes. The Japanese radio astronomy project? Yeah. 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 So apparently they just remapped 
the Milky Way hmm. and how we are. And we're do- going uh, seven kilometers faster per second. Seven kilometers per second faster than we were predicted beforehand. Oh. So we're, we're expanding at a quicker rate. No, not necessarily, according to the article I was reading on this, hmm. is that we're the projections were wrong before. Oh, okay. So it's not like we're actually speeding up towards the super massive black hole in the middle of uh, of the Milky Way. Okay. Which I hope most people actually do realize that that's what is at the center of our Milky Way. (laughs) We're slowly moving into a black hole. Yeah. But um, none of us will be alive to actually see that. Eaten by another. I think we're going to get eaten alive by another uh, galaxy. Galaxy. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's a Neil deGrasse Tyson actually believes that as well. He says that we're going to actually have yeah, a collision well, with another galaxy also. and then be consumed by that galaxy and spin around that super <laughs> right. massive black hole. But anyways, that's a whole other But before subject. that happens, our sun explodes and we all die before that. <laughs> so actually, do you no, trust us. We'll, we'll all be so they, long what, gone. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the sun's not actually going to explode. It's actually going to expand. So once it actually finishes this cycle in which it's consuming, I believe it's iron ore in the super combustion of it, it's going to expand and then start to produce a different type of raw material that it's going to be consuming and basically having the, you know, the radioactive explosions in it. But that's what's going to happen before it turns into that. So it's going to go into another dwarf cycle. I was going to say, doesn't it turn into a supernova, and as soon as after that it goes into a dwarf star? Yeah. So it's not actually going to explode. That that thought process is wrong. So the the real question about all of this, is there some high forehead egghead type that like is just paralyzed with fear that somehow in 60 billion years, the earth is either going to be baked alive, swallowed by a black hole or, or apparently be sawed in half. Like a, like something you put through a jigsaw. Yeah. I I just, I just like that as the, as the thought of like, like, Oh, so you think you're important, huh? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah really huh? how little the universe gives a shit about you that's you th- for sure yeah. you think you're important in 60 billion years we're going to be baked alaska well the, that's a, <laughs> i find funny about the whole thing of ryan's thing uh ryan mentioning that we're actually going to collide with another uh galaxy basically which is what we're going to do at some point it's not going to happen anytime in our near future but at some point, we probably will end up colliding with a whole nother galaxy. And then whichever one is the bigger one or whichever one has the more massive, uh, uh, basically, ma- uh, pull of their supernova is going to be the one who wins that. But during all that, all of our planets and other stars that are in each of those galaxies are going to be basically colliding with each other, destroying each other, creating new planets – and it's like, so our planet really, ha- I mean, we're going to be basically turned into either another basically planet that does nothing, has no life on it, which I don't see how life can continue to be supported on this planet once we collide with another galaxy. But uh, yeah, it's like, it, we really don't have any say in what the hell is going to happen. <laughs> I mean, if you really look at it from... Yeah, uh, yeah. Cosmic now, scale. Now I have the song play Wish You Were Here shit. playing in my head. Thanks for that. Yeah, you could, you should be playing it as we're colliding with another galaxy. Yeah, absolutely. What, what the hell? Um, <laughs> so did, did, did we talk about the WWF uh, or slash WWE um, issue with uh, unions and their independent contractors? Not to my knowledge. You might have <coughs> hey, let's about go. It. You might let, not have listened. Let's go from the Milky Way to WWE. Well, see, do, yeah, yeah, okay. this is the I best. Mean, this hey, is, you know, what, is, what a great segue. <laughs> this is the best part about this show is nobody's going to guess what the hell we're talking about. That's for sure. Um, well, this is pretty interesting. Well, they um, had to assume that we were going to get to the breaking news of whatever's going on in WWE. <laughs> yeah, after. Well, no, this is this is the thing <laughs> that we was, have to report once a week on the breaking news, no matter what. Well, this yeah. is the interesting. Come on, the um, kids are glamour and for it. 
<laughs> was it that, 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 the guy who ran for no, guys, uh, keep going. I'm enjoying this. Yeah. Keep interrupting John. <laughs> keep going, Jonathan. The guy. Oh, cool. Uh, the guy, <laughs> you had your chance. No one's going to make fun of you for this at all. So the, 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 the gentleman who ran for president during the Democratic, um, when they're picking what their candidate. Um, something Ang. I can't remember his last name. Or first name, excuse hey, me. Hey, this is your story, dude. But no, see, the, <laughs> the, the, the interesting thing. Don't is look at me. He wants to, he's hoping to be <laughs> elected as Biden's um, uh, job. WWE guy? Yeah, well, no. Let, <laughs> let, let me explain it, damn it. So this, so okay, this, I'm sorry. So this gentleman who uh, who tried to run for president is hoping to be elected uh, as part of the, the job. Are you talking about Andrew Yang? Andrew Yang, that's it. Thank you. Yang, I knew it was close. Andrew Yang wants to be put on Biden's board as like the job secretary or whatever the actual title is. And one of the people he wants to go after is uh, World Wrestling Entertainment. Because they have this really weird thing where they call you an independent wrestler. You basically you're an independent yeah, you're contractor. You're an independent contractor, and when you're like an Uber, you yeah. have to renegotiate. But you're com- but you can't do anything outside of it. So much so that WWE is actually taking over by demand the uh, the streaming slash Twitch channels of any of its wrestlers. Basically, demand that they shut it down, even if it even if they're using their real name. Can they work at Walgreens? <laughs> No, actually, <laughs> unless they quit. Just making, I'm just checking. I mean, well, no, the, the, the interesting thing is they're earlier saying. Earlier story. The interesting thing is they're saying because <laughs> they own the likeness of that person, so therefore they cannot stream. And so in some places, what they're saying is what WWE is actually doing is illegal. And it's not, and it's actually not the first time they're doing that. Matter of fact, Amazon apparently is hiring uh, Pinkertons to monitor people who want to form unions. <laughs> and that's one of the biggest things for uh, that's happening too. Is originally there was trying to form a union, then Hulk Hogan wait, apparently wait, wait. Kibosh, kiboshed it in WWE. Back, back this up. Mm-hmm. They're hiring Pinkertons. Yeah, <laughs> Amazon reportedly okay. has. Let me, right. let me let me clarify. This what, is what we mean by Pinkertons. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> in my mind, when you say Pinkertons, I immediately go to fucking bowler hats. Six shooters, <laughs> waistcoats, you know, and pocket watches. Kevin, Kevin Cosner, Western horses. I'll, I'll be yeah. honest. I'm kind of hoping that's what they're doing, so it's super obvious, you know. I know. I know. And uh, well, okay, so the Pinkerton of of old, the, of old, old, the yeah. army that was the Pinkerton, uh, yeah. no, no longer exists really in that capacity anymore. They they went away for a long time. They actually came back under the name Pinkerton have since very, very much subsidized, or not subsidized, um, uh, branched off into a bunch of different security companies. If anybody has ever seen the uh, the armored car people or the, um, you know, they're like, they're fucking rent-a-cops, they're mall cops, uh, securitas. Right. Yeah, the security. That's, that's owned by the Pinkerton Corporation. So they're, just, they're, they're a security corporation like anybody else, and obviously they're going to have peers to that sort of a thing, but it's not the you know, privately funded army that it, that it was, you know, with the amount of influence and things like that. So they, they are owned by another company, but uh, a lot of part of one of the big parts that they do is actually just like uh, Brinks trucks, the, uh, the trucks you see that go right. around to the stores yeah. and they collect a lot of cash yeah. and that kind of stuff. Uh, Can you imagine they're an offshoot of the Pinkertons? I, I just like, I guess somebody bought the naming rights to it and decided to say it's Pinkerton security. That's the name of huh. yeah, but there was a good fucking yeah, I was like the bridge or something between the end and the beginning of the new Pinkertons. Oh yeah, they're, they're, the the lineage is not the same. But no. I, the the reason I brought this up is I thought this was interesting because Andrew Yang, being uh, is a guy rallying against some of these companies that are really harming workers. I mean, the wrestlers are pissed. There's a, a woman by the name it goes by the name of Paige. Her real name's Soraya or something like that who who put out a comment about it and it's oh, I just thought it was interesting that there's there's people who are starting to go after Amazon start going after entertainment companies so I'm curious to see how far this is going to go do you, will this go to say tech companies who are, are known not always to not always have the greatest employees you know uh, uh, handling of employees uh. Uh. 
Hey, I just thought it was interesting. This this is potentially something that could be interesting you know, to see what happens. I'm just so tired of government just jumping in everywhere where it really doesn't need to be. I don't I think the wrestlers would be more than able to take care of themselves and, and do what they you know, feel is right. I'll tell you, Rob, I, uh, in, in my youth and, and, and very much so to my, my adulthood, I, I've got a very sort of a liberal mindset when it comes to most things. But as I've gotten older, one, I think, I think what a Republican was or conservative was very kind of misrepresented, and there's a lot of baggage that kind of comes with that. Um, even if somebody is like, like the classic sort of just, Hey, small government thing. Like I'm so behind that as an idea <laughs> of just yeah. like, yeah, let's have the government only be involved in the shit that they really truly need to be involved with. Um, matter of fact, best way I ever heard it explained, uh, not really explained, but just a take on it is the government is there for what you need to do at gunpoint. You know, like that they are the monopoly on on force in this country. What needs to be done at the point of a gun? Protection, yeah. You know, uh, any kind of you know security uh, uh, things like that, sure. But do I need a gun to build a library to fund artists? You know what I mean? Like, no, I don't. I yeah. can I can fund my own artists if I, if I want to if I'm so inclined. Uh, but uh, yeah, so like, like what what taxes and all those things go do for? And I'm not one of these like like get rid of all social programs uh, uh, at all. But damn, the government's got their hand in too much shit, and they suck at everything. Like, <laughs> why do we why do we trust this this organization? Like, if the government needs to do it, like why they fucking blow everything else? If you want something over budget, underperforming. <laughs> and, and I mean, just, the U.S. government, I uh, yeah. accept no substitutes, man. Uh, well, they did screw up a, a whorehouse. They did. It's true. I mean, yeah. How do you fuck up I, a whorehouse? <laughs> you know, I mean, I <laughs> the oldest profession in the world, in the, in government the entire history, in the entire history of mankind, the oldest profession. The U.S. government is ruined by the government. And you know the <laughs> second. Yeah, you know the second the headlines. Old, you know what the second oldest profession is politician. Doctors. Yeah. Politicians. Oh, I was say doctors stealing with uh, <laughs> dealing with diseases from horses. Probably that too. <laughs> yeah, I I generally would agree on on Ryan on that, especially coming to the wrestling thing because they're voluntarily paying to sign over their 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 name their their visual rights. For a while, but I, I'm super curious well, on how this know, is going to handle them being the so-called private these, contractor. Yeah, you get a lot of these. I mean, when you have such a name behind you, like when you want to be a wrestler, you don't want you don't dream when you're a ten year old about being on some third rate fucking wrestling promotion. You want to be in the WWE. That's what you see. You know what I mean? So these kids come in there with a dream. <laughs> It's the same shit that happens with people who want to be a rock star. You know what I mean? You you don't dream about playing fucking bars in the Midwest on tour in a smelly van with three other dudes. You dream about being the fucking Rolling Stones. But so you come in there with these wide eyed ideals and then some, you know, producer or whoever, you know, gets a hold of you and says, hey, kid, we're going to make you a star or whatever the modern day equivalent is. And in the music industry, they started doing what they call a 360 deal. So it used to be just, hey, we have your, your licensing rights for your music. But, you know, you can do your live shows. You can make appearances. You can sell merchandise, um, all these things there. Now the 360 deal means they get a piece of your Twitter. They get a piece of your Instagram, your, your merch sales. Everything that you make money off of, you're signing over you as a fucking person. It's well, the the here, sign this in blood, man. I mean that that's and if you sign the on the label. Thing. They just like, hey, you you want to be in the WWE? We're gonna take a fucking piece of everything you do. How bad do you want? And I think with some the the only thing that I heard that people were complaining about is they're not technically employees. And so people are, people are, are questioning, how can you tell people where to go, how to dress, how to act, what, to, you know, there's like all these requirements and then say, oh, this person can't do a show here or can't do a thing here, which I, I do think they're, they do have, 
an interesting question. How can you demand? Uh, how can you demand somebody who's technically not an employee demand that they do and sign over everything? And I'm just curious what what it, what effects this is going to have on independent contractors, like people say, like Uber and and all these people. I know California just had a fight with that. Um, is they they signed a law banning in you know private 1099 contractors, and then the well, Calif- they lost the Uber yeah. bill. Yeah, the proposition right came and uh, passed right. So now Uber and all those other 1099 people can do it, right? No, so so the the bill was that that they had to be considered employees if you were a gig employee. Yeah, they had to be. Uber or Lyft or, you know, Dash Hub or whatever it may be. But that bill actually didn't pass. The, the proposition where, didn't Where pass. we're trying to make them employees oh, yeah. forcing, you know, <clears throat> all these companies to, to have to do uh, withholdings and, and everything else that you have to do when you have an employee. And then, of course, they have, they're so large on their scale, it's, you know, it, it, it would have been a huge, huge hit. To their bottom line, had that passed in California, yeah, that's that's why I'm I'm curious <laughs> in what's going to happen because you got both sides of the scale, and I think that's something that could affect do something. I don't know. I just I thought it was super interesting because it's the first time I have seen in a long time any politician or wannabe politician specifically named the WWE. <laughs> this time, it had nothing to do with. Um, well, I can already see where we're heading if that's the case. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody needs to go get an Anne Rand book and read the Fountainhead or Atlas, Atlas Shrugged, and just to see where where we don't want to head. So I have a yeah. transition, and whoever has yeah. a topic can go next. Um, James, well, you know what? On the on the vein of uh, uh, wrestling and whatnot, I was going to ask if any of you guys saw the Tyson fight. No, I wanted yeah, to. I watched the highlights of the one right before it, the NBA star who got knocked out. By, that was, by, by a YouTuber. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty yeah, interesting. Yeah, by a fucking YouTuber. Uh, uh, actually, one of my favorite memes was before he got knocked out, he was asked to like and subscribe. <laughs> uh, what was it, Jake Paul? <laughs> yeah, something uh, yeah, like that. Jake Paul. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, there's there's some pretty good memes about that one. (laughs) So what, what happened to the Tyson fight? I didn't hear, I haven't heard who won, who lost, or if it was a tie. Was it really? So yeah, yeah, they, they called it a draw, but here's the thing is it, it leading up to it, it was two sides of the promotion coin. There was the sort of like official sanctioned, um, uh, boxing commission side of the promoting where it's like hey guys look this is just going to be an exhibition match this is this is hard sparring the guys denied having head gear so we're just going to go hard sparring a few days before the fight or a week or so they're talking about uh yeah and we're not really going to allow any any knockouts um and and if there's a cut we're going to stop the fight you know things like that <laughs> and then there was the other side of the of the coin where everybody, including Tyson and Roy Jones Jr., were like, "What's an exhibition? I don't understand the difference." I was to say, did anybody what do you mean uh, by sparring? I was going to say, did anybody <laughs> tell Tyson that this isn't uh, a real fight? Coming from a man who said he stopped practicing boxing because he was scared of the person that made him. That's a direct quote yeah. from him. Yeah. Because he didn't yeah. like who he was as a boxer. Yeah, so he's a completely <laughs> different person now. So, I, I, you know, he's an old man. Yeah, but well, there's, he, I, there's no fucking it. version of Tyson <clears throat> who's not trying to knock your head off. That's him in yeah. sparring. I, I, so how, any of that dude's sparring partners for his entire life, and they're going to tell you, this guy was trying to knock me the fuck out. So, <laughs> so on the scale of Muhammad Ali, Rumble into the Jumble, to Golden Boy versus Pacquiao, where was this? far as a fight well, do you this think is nowhere near it, it's apples and oranges to a certain extent because it's uh you know it it was uh, an exhibition between a couple of fucking old guys you know that's what it was for so you can't really compare it you know thinking oh this is what would have happened when both of these guys were in their prime what were they paid um, uh, at least a million each i, I want to say 30 million 30 Thanks. million each uh but uh, 
30, yeah, thirty million each, and I think <laughs> literally all of it is going to charity. <laughs> so man, I would get in the ring right now for thirty million. So so yeah. so, so, yeah. so James, I think I'd get in the ring with Mike Tyson hey, for thirty million. What the heck, you know, a couple of blows, you know, go down real quick. Fake a cut. I mean, this is the bell rings I'm dropping. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 James, do you think this was like watching Golden Boy and Pacquiao fight? No, as far as I, what I could tell is it was a good fight. They really put their effort in, and it's just what I've read. I haven't actually seen it, but um, it was a good well, fight. Let me they tell put their, you, their I, effort I, in, and it was a draw. What did it cost to watch it? I, Fifty it was bucks. Fifty bucks. Me and a buddy went in, went in on it uh, together. Because wow. um, I was, I mean, I was born in 1985 when he became a pro. Oh, okay. I, I've been literally watching Mike Tyson my entire life, so I was very excited about this. Um, I wanted to see it, but so I didn't know where you could watch it. The card was actually pretty bucks. good. I know. It was way more entertaining than than I thought it was going to be. But then all of a sudden, Tyson and Jones come out, and Neither one of them looked like they were in their fifties. The, like they were, they were putting it together. I would say Roy Jones Jr. got more tired the last three rounds than Tyson did. Tyson came in looking fucking furious. So you I know, saw an interview like with Tyson. Good. Yeah, I saw an interview with Tyson about mm, a month before the, the bout, and he was talking about his workout regimen. And I mean, my God, for for an old guy, he was really yeah. going with it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I wonder. He's. Yeah. Oh, man. I think yeah. he's on the Sylvester Stallone fires thing because Sylvester Stallone is on HGH I, and he's on t- testosterone. They probably and, did everything they could. Oh no, I mean, they had to get it sanctioned. Yeah, um, they had to get it sanctioned through the boxing commission, so they did. Oh, work I, yeah. I, I'm ninety percent sure on that. Well, if so so, so if it was an actual sanction, sanction, and not just a straight exhibition match. No, yeah, oh, no, the yeah, boxing this commission is... had to fucking sanction it. Hmm. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. why they had to call it an exhibition because they. You know, for one, aren't going to throw any uh, uh, belts or anything on the line. It's, it's not for you know any other purposes other than this one fight. Can you imagine the fight? Uh, but Tyson co- said at the end he's going to fight again. Yeah, well, really? I mean, I didn't hear that. The, the fight's yeah, under geez. COVID rules, so you know that did they have to quarantine with each other before the fight? Yeah, I no, mean, yeah, they were. They did the whole thing, the whole nine leading up to it, oh, and. Man. Uh, and it was really cool how they actually did the show. They they ended up um, basically blacking out everything but the the ring itself, and the ring was small. Oh, this is it was in Tyson's favor how small that fucking ring was. So they well, did really? they wow. did this old school. They did the the light over the ring dimmed crowd. Yep, this was yeah, like nineteen thirties boxing. Crowd, it could have been one person or a thousand people. You wouldn't have been able to tell. It looked great. That's oh, awesome. Um, That's and actually then really I cool. swear to God, they were fighting in a phone booth, man. That ring was tiny. So what do you think it was, 16 or 18 feet across? Oh, man. I, I don't know. Whatever uh, boxing ring sizes are, I, I'd have to look it up. I, I'm sure it would probably be regulation would be my guess. The size of a prison cell. No, it was not, it was not a regulation <laughs> boxing ring. Well, no, I mean, it was a type of boxing ring, but it was not a full-size boxing ring well hard, it's hard so it appeared not to be but i wonder if it really was i mean no, why would they go absolutely was not so they didn't okay so okay here here's a a standard ring according to wikipedia boxing ring a standard ring is between 16 and 20 feet uh so by what uh it just says uh to do six it just says 16 so it's probably 16 by 16 or 20 by 20 no, that's a rectangle it's not a square <laughs> 16 by 16 <laughs> It's not a square. It's a square 16 circle, by 16. John. 16 by 16 would be a square. Yeah, boxing rings are uh, squares. No, they're rectangles. Are they really? No, they're squares. Well, I they're... guess I guess it depends. <laughs> Obviously, there must be multiple. Maybe I'm wrong. I never thought they were rectangles. I know that's stupid, but I never they're thought squares. about it. It's the, uh, I thought they were slightly. Well, we referred to as the squared circle. Yeah. I always yeah. thought they were slightly longer. One side was... <laughs> so the ring was stri- longer from the uh, opposing corner. I may be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. So I, sorry, I guess it would be then if it was an exhibition, I wonder if that would be a smaller size, like say like a 16 foot ring, especially for a couple of old guys and you'd want to have it entertaining. Well, so if that, it was 20 that's feet, the reason that it was, that's the reason it was chosen. It was not because it was an exhibition. It was because they're old and they wanted to give them some, <laughs> they wanted to tighten it up. So, so it wasn't just a dance the entire time. Yeah. Well, it's like watching some of the latest UFC fights I've seen where they're, you know. 
these ha- one guy's laying on their back, the other person's charging, and they're both breathing really heavy. <laughs> well, good for good for him. Well, that's I'm glad to hear it was entertaining. At, a high level. at least it was entertaining. It was very was, good. Yeah, good. it was very entertaining. I mean, there's there's clips all over the internet now that you can you can watch. It's, it's not. It was not just watching two old guys try to feel young again. It was a good fight. <laughs> so what was it? The, the <laughs> I heard. Oh God! What's the name? The the George guy, George Foreman. George yeah, Foreman? like watching some of the George Foreman comeback matches weren't particularly exciting. You know, and he, he was, was a hell of a boxer. You know, back the only interesting day. about George Foreman is that um, uh, his fights weren't exciting. <laughs> Ever? I mean, I had to, he just hit like crazy. I mean, you know, he, he you didn't want to get hit. So I wonder if yeah, it was like George Foreman was was a scary, scary son of a bitch. Yeah. So it was like watching like I don't know if you can compare the two, but I hate watching Floyd Mother Mary Floyd May May Merryweather matches because <laughs> I've never seen one that was exciting. All of them are just the ones I've seen are all dull. I mean, the dude's Who an the amazing hell are boxer. You talking about Floyd Money Mayweather or Merryweather, however the fuck you say his last name. <laughs> Mayweather. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Rob. You're welcome. <laughs> you knew who I was talking about. You're just being a dick. You're surprised? No, not really. Okay. <laughs> but, I mean, the dude watching the guy is kind of boring, though, I think. Well, you know what? If you really want to be excited about boxing, it generally isn't heavyweights. Watch the flyweight guys. Right. You know? I mean, these guys yeah. are just wailing away. I mean, that, for... that's, that, that's where I got introduced to Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, he's uh-huh. an amazing boxer. Lower weights, and he is, he's a badass boxer. And, I mean, I i always enjoyed watching him because he was, oh, yeah. he's not only fast, but he can take a hit, and he was very technical in his strikes back. Oh, it's it, amazing he, difference. Was like, not wasting anything. Right. And that's what's yeah. one of the reasons I also brought up, like, in a really amazing like boxer. Ray having a very bad match was the, the Oscar De La Hoya Pacquiao fight. Yeah. Cause Pacquiao went up a class. Golden boy went down, down a class, class and it was like watching somebody get mugged. James and I both felt guilty yeah. for watching it. It was that, that, oh, that that's yeah. why it, to me, it's like, that's okay. One of the few fights I won't watch again because it was just so bad. So one-sided. So oh sad. yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll match. Well, and then that, you know, you that ever, always happens. Did you ever see the, was it the Philadelphia, uh, Philadelphia is the movie where Tom Hanks played a, a guy who got AIDS towards the end of the movie, got super skinny. That's what he looked like. He looked emaciated. He didn't look like he could barely raise his arm. Mm. It was, or if you haven't seen that, just look at the machinist. Oh yes. That's oh, a better yeah. example. It looked horrible. Mm. It was an yeah. amazingly bad fight. Yeah, it was. It was brutal. It was so brutal. I, you're just like wishing that the ref would just call the fight within like 30 seconds of the first round. Yeah. Oh yeah. After you <laughs> after you saw like the the after you saw them come out and you saw them start to square up, you're but you're just like, this 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 can't be good. This this is not. And I was right. You know, you're just like, I'm watching De La Hoya get murdered. I uh, all for a paycheck, man. I'll do a lot for a paycheck. I would not do that. I, you're right. I wouldn't either. But that's what a lot of these guys do. They'll, you know, um, you know, they'll go in. I don't know if you guys remember um, a guy named Ken Shamrock. He was, yeah. he was in the first yeah. UFC ever, and he did some yeah. wrestling. He, he he was all over the place. Him and his brother Frank, um, whose name, thank you, Frank Shamrock. Uh, the Ken <laughs> Shamrock was. Again, in the very, very first UFC, and I want to say 1994. Um, it was 92. Fighting against. Yeah, but go ahead. Uh, was it 92? It was early 90s. I think it was like 92. It was definitely the early 90s for sure. But um, in any case, he, uh, he was a uh, uh, shoot fighter, which is just a style of like like wrestling, you know. Uh, uh, both wrong, down 93. And, <laughs> okay, there we go. I'm, I'm sure there's a point but, to the um, story. I'm waiting for it, other than trying to figure out what yeah, date no. it is for crying out loud. <laughs> well, I was James fucking trying to. I know. Uh, November 12th, 1993. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. Couldn't do it. Couldn't leave it alone, could you? <laughs> uh, no. Anyway, the last fight that he did uh, in the UFC was not that long ago, maybe a couple of years ago, um, I, I would say. And, and he's done a lot of, like, commentating and stuff since. But he fought 
until very, very recently, like into his 50s. Oof, wow. uh, I want to say he was <clears throat> he was about 50. I wonder how much arthritis that dude now, has. Now, here's the thing is at the end of the fight, I mean, he's fighting this young kid. I mean, I, I can't even remember who it was. But the dude just whooped his ass for, for, uh, for three rounds. Uh, and... At the end, you know, everyone's looking at him like, oh, man, are you hanging it up? And, and, and everyone told me I, I shouldn't do this. And everyone told me, oh, I'm too old and all this stuff. And I'll never forget all he said was like, look, I feel like at this point I've earned the right to fight for fun. <laughs> for fun. I, I think when these guys have done this for just so long that that's what they do. That's what they know. And even if they're in their 50s, they're like, like this is this is what I'm good at. You know, yeah. hey, did you guys uh, ever? Like, even if I can't really hang with these young guys anymore, <clears throat> do you I, ever get a chance to watch Sugar Ray Leonard fight? No, I haven't seen. Oh, it. sure. Oh, yeah. you oh, gotta watch because you know. Here's a else. yeah. Here's a guy that um, I think he won uh, world titles in five different weight divisions. Damn. In his boxing career, he was yeah, yeah, un- fucking three that I can remember. He's unbelievable. Um, I mean, the guy he he had to stop. He stopped fighting because. I believe he had a detached retina after a fight, and uh, there, if, once you have one, you don't want to have head blows because you're liable to have it again. He was, in, and I think he may have had him on both eyes, and he was going to go blind if he continued boxing, and so he had to stop. But if you want to talk about a man who was unbelievable <coughs> as far as a boxer goes, I think uh, I mean, I'll look it up really quick. He. He competed from 1977 to 1997. Damn, that's a winning, long run. Oh, yeah, winning yeah. world titles in five weight divisions. Wow. Anyway, yeah, the, guy, the guy was amazing. He, you know, if he, if For those of you out there who have never watched a Sugar Ray Leonard fight, you really ought to watch him. He was amazing. And was amazing. I, I will say something about Ryan talking about Ken Shamrock. Three rounds is a pretty, I'd say that's a good showing for an older guy. It's not like Kimbo Slice who got knocked out in 30 seconds. Yeah. So, I, was, I mean, no, he, he, uh, he's, he's a very tough fucking guy, man. You just, you can't, you can't hardly do anything to hurt this dude. So after. Who do you <laughs> think is, so many times. so who do you think is an actual tougher fighter? I mean, like say somebody like Sugar Ray Leonard or like a Ken Shamrock. I know it's different. What you're doing is different, but if you're going to like toughness, who do you think is, is, is. Well, the thing about Sugar oh, Ray I mean, Leonard, well, he, he was known for his speed. He was so fast. You know, we talked about Muhammad yeah. Ali yeah. about as fast as he was. Sugar Ray Leonard was faster. Wow. I mean, they had a slow down the film <laughs> to be able to watch the, the fact that he knocked somebody out. He'd hit him so hard that the guy would be down on the ground. And they went, how did he fall? Did he trip? What happened? No. Sugar Ray yeah. hit him so fast. <laughs> it was like the old, so it's like the old joke of Bruce Lee having, asking him, Hey, would you slow down when you, when you do uh-huh. a punch? Yeah. Well, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. They, that, that was what he was known for. was his speed. He was just so fast. So I don't know. You know, it's, it, it, you mix different fighting. He's just so fast, he, he makes other fast people look not fast. Exactly. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Some, some of it was really incredible. Those were the days pre-COVID, <laughs> pre-AIDS, pre-all of that stuff. So. <laughs> when I'm 64. I hear the Beatles playing. I would play the Beatles, but they have lawyers. Fortunately, I passed that up a while ago, too. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the days was not the Beatles. Yeah, I, 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 Beatles now did I, a version I, of it. I do kind of think and about that every now and again. I'll look at somebody over the age of 50 or 60 and just be like, so pre-AIDS, what was that like? Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have no frame of reference. There was blood everywhere, man. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Needles being shared yeah, left and right. None better. of us gave a fuck. So I actually have a weird story That's about right. this. So, oh, and, yeah. and so I don't know why. So I had a, uh, I think it was graphic arts and imaging in high school. So <laughs> back, back in the very early aughts to late nineties. <laughs> and this teacher somehow so brought it up. Because I don't know. Right. <laughs> it was all using 8086s and you know, the old telephone modems from, uh, <laughs> okay. uh, Borg games. Uh, no Matthew Broderick though. Um, I remember this teacher talking about randomly talking about what it was like in the sixties and the, you know, about the, the free love and you could have as much sex as you want and stuff like this. And he would, I remember him like a good 30 minute rant. And this is, this is also the same teacher that later that year said, you know, human women are the only women who have exposed, who have exposed breasts. <laughs> human women, other non-human women. 
at gorillas apparently because it's <laughs> oh, I, this, okay he I'm was just... he was kind of a hippie but i just this 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 teacher was full of great quotes but i do remember him talking about the 60s and 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 70s you yeah, know what being... was still around back then syphilis and gonorrhea so free love and back then was not always free this is true ask uh, scarface because he he went crazy because yeah, he died and he was and cry me a liver. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unless you're allergic to it. He didn't. Uh, uh, Al Capone actually apparently. Oh, amoxicillin! Would... God forbid. <laughs> Al Capone. Amoxicillin. Okay. Al Capone apparently hated needles, which is a reason why he he never got anything treated. Uh, from what I've read. Whatever. Oh. Oh, hey. saved him from a really long jail sentence, I guess. Um, <laughs> this is true. Kind of worked out in his favor, although, I mean, I, I, I understand syphilis is not something you want to die from. <laughs> no, I've heard that that's not a good thing. But if there's ever a guy you want yeah, to die from syphilis. Yeah, not going to few weeks or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but if, you know, if there's ever a guy you want to die from syphilis, he, you know, he's you know, like in the top ten. Uh, Caliglia. <laughs> so you don't know... Uh, James Earl Jones decided to go uncredited for his role of voice acting Darth Vader because he considered David Pro's performance inside the Vader costume to be the more defining of the two performance. And that gentleman just passed away within the last week or two. Yes, he did. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Okay, so that brings up Mandalorian. Do you guys watch that? I've been watching the first season. <laughs> first Fuck season? Yeah. So I have not seen up. the episode for Friday. I was waiting a oh, bit on it. Oh man, the latest episode is so good. So very good. Is is there so a reason good. why people are hating on Yoda? Is it and, and it's it, not they're Yoda. not hating, no, no, you mean baby baby Yoda? Yeah, there's a ton of people who are hating on Yoda for multiple it's reasons not online. Yoda. No, it's not. Well it's that's the that's same, that's it's the same species. Yeah, and nobody species, apparently right. realizes that according to expanded universe. The, the original universe, um, Yoda's master wasn't exactly a nice guy from what I've read. Okay, so, well, so technically, Yoda is alive during this whole thing. Yes. This is right after the first Death Star blows up. And in between that and the building of the next Death Star, that's the time period that this is all happening. In. Wait, wait, wait. Didn't so, in, during, during one of the episodes, I thought they talked about both Death Stars. Uh, yeah, so did play, I. No, no, they did. Um, there was an episode where they went to that sand, was it Tantooine? Something like that where that one yeah, guy. Yeah, no, it was the fall after trick. the fall of the Empire. Yeah, this is the fall of the, yeah, the Empire. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so that's right. The whatever period. The, so five years so after. It's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, that's right. It's five years after Return of the Jedi. So what's what's interesting is, is there's really hardly any Jedis at all at this point. And uh, I don't want to, I mean, I don't want this to be a spoiler episode for those. Oh, I already know Ahsoka's in it. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, so then, you know, there is this thing called the internet. Uh, Well, I, you know, I didn't know if you were into spoilers or not. So, but there's, there may be be one listener uh, out there. uh, On the last episode. Last episode is so good. So oh, how man. do you, so without going too much detail and since the cat's out of the bag a little bit, what do you think about the woman who played said character? Because the pictures I've seen are spot on. <clears throat> yeah. So th- there's been some controversy about, uh, about her. You mean, um, Dawson? Yeah. yeah. So I thought <laughs> to me, I thought it was perfect. Um, although I will say that the, the head, what's supposed to be part of her head and all, all that, I, She's a twilight, so she's got the tentacle head. Yeah, it, it was a little odd. I'm not sure that they got that spot on. Although I've okay. heard, I've heard some. So, I've seen some pictures of it. Now yeah. moving around, is it as bad as the ones from the Return of the Jedi when they're when they show them there? No, it's okay. better than that. Well, look, that was the, the hold on a second. First of all, that was the first time that any of us had ever seen a Twilight. So, well, true. They get to decide what that looks it, like. Was that good or not? Is trying to be that. Well, this is the first live action um, version of it of the of set because that, that no, it isn't. Jedi had a had a Twilight in, in Baba's. Uh, no, I didn't Jabba's think. Hut. I didn't yeah. think she was a. I didn't yeah. think she was that character because. No, I just saw. Oh, no, 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 that's no, not no her species. Character. Yeah, her I, species. I thought her species was a different species than Twilight be, uh, because I remember yeah. I read today that they said she is not one of them. Mm. Well, anyway, I, you know, it was okay. Uh, she, I thought personally, uh, she did a very good job of being uh, a Jedi uh, for what she was. I'll tell you what, I liked 
speaking of the tentacles, I liked that they went practical and they didn't try to make it some weird CGI thing. I, I really appreciated that. Yeah. Despite their, their sort of kind of, it, it took me a minute to kind of get used to them, let's say. Despite that, really, like, I, would, I preferred it to some weird CGI thing. So, you know what I really liked? Some, some of the effects that I liked in, in this last episode was particularly her fighting in the fog or the mist or whatever yeah, that was, right? Yeah. Right? And so, and she, you didn't see the light, lightsabers that were on all the time. She, you know, she, when she needed to, she got in there and kicked ass and turned them off and moved away and hit around. And it looked, you know, that was more realistic to me. That was some of the best Jedi fighting, I thought. Uh, that I've seen, yeah. it was really, really no, good. No, she went, she went like, like very, very like, like ninja samurai style with that. It was, it was fucking amazing. Yeah, it was great. So, it done really weird. Now, it was weird her working with the Mandalorian, but hey, you know, yeah. Time... Well, let's stop talking about it because James seven cents. Okay, so she's she's not so she's not uh she's a T O G U. She's not a Twi'lek. She's something else. It's T O G R U T A. Okay. So okay. now, well, then never mind. Have I don't, you guys, you know, do whatever you want with What do we thing. know? I don't know. Anything. Well, this is according to Wookie. So, well, this you is heard Wikipedia about the fans getting mad at Gina Carano. Yes. Why? Now, oh, okay. Well, hold on. I'm going to get to it. Fans are also mad at Rosario Dawson. <laughs> is this an anti-woman thing? And, that's kind of what I'm thinking now. So what the big thing about Gina Carano is she doesn't want to wear a mask, right? She doesn't believe people should be forced to wear a mask. So people are bashing her and, and there's a group of star Wars fans apparently that are even trying to get her fired. Are you, oh, so, oh, so you're talking about like COVID related, so, not masks, not a Mandalorian yeah. mask. Okay. No. Oh, she's no, an no, anti-masker. I, I was, yes. I'm sorry. And now people are also <laughs> mad at Rosario Dawson because apparently, I don't know how long ago, she was sued over a transphobic assault. I'm like, leave these fucking people alone. Why well, the hell look, do people I don't even give a, a fuck crap. what they do in their fucking personal lives? Right? I, don't, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I, like, I'm like you're in this show. I like you as an actor. I like the characters you play. Cool. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I don't fucking care. I, and that's kind of where I'm at. I want Gina Carano to keep with this character. I like the character she's playing. I do too. It's one she's, of the best she's... people I've ever seen her do acting. And I've seen her stupid, whatever, ever, ever action film that she did, <laughs> which was really stupid. Um, but she's really good in this. She does a good job in this too. part. No, I, I really uh, like I blame the writers on that one, not, not so... necessarily Gina Carano. And then, I mean, I'm not the biggest Rosario Dawson fan, but I'm looking forward to seeing her do this role. <clears throat> So, so let me get this straight. I've been a fan of Rosario Dawson since Clerks too. I thought you liked her from uh, Kids. Uh, I was, yeah, I was gonna say Kids for me. So but, I, I mean, look, yeah, for sure. But I, I really began to hear to her from Clerks. So let That's me get job. let okay. me get this I'll straight. It, for Gina, it's because she's an anti-masker. For Rosario Dawson, yeah. is because <laughs> she beat up a trans woman. She yeah. was sued over a transphobic assault, is what it is. Yeah, the lawsuit was thrown out. So it w- never came to anything, but people are claiming and she probably that just like stepped on somebody's shoe, and because it was Rosario Dawson, they found them. Okay, so probably. it's physical assault. Okay, people can she sue for said, anything. Excuse me, sir, and it was some chick or something. I have no idea, but yeah, you're right. It was probably something like that, and they claimed assault. I don't care. I don't really want to know. Well, that's her personal life. So, if Gina Carano wants to wear a mask or thinks masks are stupid, that's fine. I think masks are kind of stupid too. Doesn't mean that she's going around not wearing one. See, this is a this is the, the, the right. You can have an opinion and yet still wear a mask. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I mean, I literally have an opinion that masks are stupid, but I still wear one because I actually like my job. <laughs> so, I don't know. See, yeah, this and is I'll tell you what, I, uh, and I'm very much for the I'm very much for the mask. And I'm sick to fucking death of them. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so I want to get, I got to figure out where I want to get some mad trio masks made. Cause if I got to wear something, I'm going to fucking advertise. Uh, um, I don't, I, 
I've been thinking about this a while and I kind of talked about a little bit how in the past I had a hard time separating people's comments from who they are. And now I'm at the opposite end because now that's where we are. You have people bringing up Mel Gibson, apparently Gina's like, because she's an anti-masker. Who cares? She does a great job in this series. And And you know what? Look, I mean, maybe, maybe it wasn't even like, like, I mean, we're throwing the label anti-masker, but I mean, it could have been, she said one fucking thing about it in the beginning of Rona and maybe has been changed her mind. But you know, we literally, like the three of us just now took that from, uh, she said something negative about the mask to she's an anti-masker. Like she's out there fucking picking it. But honestly, even <laughs> right. But but I think the walking th- at Hollywood Boulevard with a sign saying, "Yeah, like, you know, we, we attached, I, I, we attached our own bias to that article." article. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, Ryan, time out, James. <laughs> so I looked it up just to. I read this like a couple of weeks ago about Gina Carano because I saw something about like, oh, fans are mad at her. She posted, uh, let's see, one, two, three, no, one, two. Three, four. So she posted like about like probably like maybe five or six tweets that I'm not seeing here of things saying, you know, either masks don't work or that she just isn't into them. Yeah. So that's it. That's it. And then uh, I see one also about supporting the, the voter fraud saying that, you know, there is voter fraud out there. So there's, those things, and I guess apparently that's what fans are pissed off at her about, no. is because of her personal views. Tell them to get her over themselves. Views. Wow. Yeah. If I'm at the point where I'm really willing to forgive, like, I'll watch a Whoopi Goldberg movie now, because... Oh, wait. Changed my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I can't forgive Whoopi Goldberg. See, this is see, this is the the thing I'm on is because like there's 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 actors who yeah, have said you can still watch Star Trek: I can. The Next Generation. Yeah, I can. I can. You're right. You're right, and she did a good job in it, and she was a good now, character. Uh, yeah. I will never say that she was a bad character in that. I actually mm-hmm. like that role, but there are times when I see her in that, and I'm just like, shut up. But you know what? She does a good job in that. Yes, she did. I, I mean. I liked her roles in the early nineties and those things. Yeah. Yeah. But like the- now we live in it. We live in a society that whatever you post, whatever you say that you do online or in any version of the media gets spread over millions of people within minutes. Right. And then and, and you get you get stocked away in somebody's effect. file to use on you later. We yeah. live, we live in a post forgiveness world. Because nowadays people, like everybody, all of a sudden, better be pre-forgiveness <clears throat> the way things are going. Well, yeah, but I'm going to forgive you right now for whatever you're going to say. <laughs> right? You're forgiven. I don't know if I will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. It's like I have pastor friends going, and that's why Jesus died on the cross. Uh-huh. Um. <laughs> thank you. Uh. So uh, the only reason I say that is because now it's like everybody's like your teenage sister, you're like you're like that one sibling you don't get along with. They're bringing up shit from twenty years ago that only you know that yeah. you're the only person who remembers. And, well, it's like trying to remember the MMA. <clears throat> I mean, you were talking about well, Gina. okay, and then yeah. and, so, and then let me let me throw this in as a as a as a possible hypothesis here. Um, I'm a I'm the fucking news editor. And I'm looking at my staff Monday morning going, hey, we need something for, need for, you know, this week's fucking issue. Find me somebody who's pissed off uh, at Mandalorian right now. Because everybody yeah. loves Mandalorian. If we print something where people are pissed off, I, it, it's going to start the fucking flames. It's going to turn into the usual <laughs> yes, dumpster fire. Yes, I want to get more more views. So let's start. With- and then we're talking about it right now. <clears throat> you know what I mean, like yeah. we're talking about it yep. because we think it's ridiculous. Other yep. people might be talking about it because they agree. But it's this manufactured. Like there was four fucking people that even noticed to give a shit. Here, I, I, I got it. And now you've brought it to our attention as if it's a big fucking deal. Not you, John, but you know media. Well, here I got I got a quote for you to add to Star Wars fans. <clears throat> Star Wars, uh, Star Wars, Mandalorian, the only TV show in the world that would make redneck zombies by trauma seem like Titanic. <laughs> All right. What do you think? Do you think that would be enough to get people uh, pissed off, or you think that's too? Uh, like, Got me pissed off right now. <laughs> See, hey, <laughs> so, um, I'm sorry, I, I just couldn't help it. I so 
Matt, we're, we're running. You know, Gina's 38. My God. I never yeah. understood her shtick. I never thought she was an amazing <laughs> fighter, especially once the point everybody started calling her the face of MMA. Once you started, they started caring more about her looks and her you know, ability. You it even took me um, way into the first episode she appeared in to even realize who it was. Even though I, I knew who she was, all of a sudden it dawned on me and went, oh. I think yeah. it helps it's been a while before she's been in the, since <clears throat> she's just really been in the spotlight. spotlight? Well, maybe that's it, but yeah. it, you know, it was Well, she kind of Well, she was on. in Deadpool. Yeah. Yes, she was. Yeah. But she actually didn't say anything in Deadpool, which is why I wasn't expecting much from her acting in Mandalorian, <laughs> but I've so far very much enjoyed her. I so am, if, I have too. If, You're absolutely right. If they bring Gene if they Gene if they keep Gina, I want them to bring Cyborg as a bad guy somewhere in the 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 TV show. I didn't even know she was in Fast and Furious 6, but I haven't seen Fast and Furious I haven't six. either. But there's, the movie I was trying to think of six. was Haywire, which is the one that she starred in. I oh, told you fucking Haywire. Uh, I wasn't listening to no, you. Oh, yeah, I saw that yeah, one too. I, you, did, <laughs> you two were probably talking over each other. Probably. <clears throat> yeah. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, that was a... Movie but, right yeah, along, that movie dude. was just an excuse to show off her wrestling and jujitsu skills. Probably. Yeah. That, no, that's literally what it was. So that's that, all she did. Now, now I want to see a Gina and uh, Ronda Rousey fight. No way. Gina Carano would fucking probably break Ronda Rousey. She's she's like got like fucking forty pounds on Ronda. Well, Ronda Rousey's hilarious because like if you ever right. if you ever watched her little bit of like WWE wrestling that made her a striker, oh, and yeah. if you if you watched her her actually re, uh, do MMA, it's like I, I she wasn't really a striker. That's kind of why she got her ass kicked. I'll tell you, well, Rhonda's too sensitive. She was a very sensitive, misunderstood person. I, I think. Yeah, she, she did kind of, in my opinion, Ronda Rousey just went like, wait, what's this losing shit? I'm yeah. not doing this anymore. Yeah, I, 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 think, I, lost, uh, I lost once. Twice. Well, I'm done. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then she says, oh, okay, I'll try one more time. I would never lose. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. her biggest problem. I think Joe Rogan said it. She just bought into the hype because at one point in said time she was considering suicide, and I remember a lot of people going, "You do realize that a lot of good, a lot of fighters are better after their first loss because once you, what yeah. was it? I heard something at some point it's like you never want to be a fighter with an undefeated record because yeah. it's gonna fuck you up when you lose. I mean, that's the, yeah, that's the thing is she was hanging all of her hopes on that. I'm going to be yeah. the, the queen of this. I'm retiring undefeated. And it's like, hey, you know what? That doesn't happen for, for more than one person in a, in a fucking entire generation. Yeah. You know? it, yeah. Doesn't, it doesn't help that, I swear to God, she fought like three or four times a year. Yeah. Well, she was a golden child, man. She put it on the map for women. I mean, really, what she did as a pioneer cannot be fucking uh, overstated. It oh, really yeah. can't. It just, no, yeah. I think the way she kind of went out looked a little bit like, like, oh, okay, you know what? You brought up these women, uh, got a bunch of women into it. And now it turns out that like three or four of them can beat your ass. Like, you know what? Hey, you suck it up or don't. That's cool. I always thought that was weird because if you have like a, the chick like Cyborg, who was absolutely brutal, was 10 times the fighter, but just wasn't attractive. Like if you put Cyborg <clears throat> versus Ronda Rousey, she would knock Ronda Rousey out in the first minute and a half. Hey, this is yeah. I mean, well, that's the thing that happened to Gina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Gina went up against Cyborg, and Cyborg beat her, annihilated her. I remember <laughs> yeah. that. Fight. And for the for the same reason that Gina was a very one dimensional kind of hey, I'm going to bank on my wrestling skills when no one was really at a, putting it all together at that time. Then you meet somebody who does, and it's like, hey, you're there's holes in your game. Yeah, you know it's yeah. it's the old line of I I doesn't matter how big and bad you are, there's always somebody better. That's true. Okay, that's yeah. what it, that's what it comes down to. And when you buy into your own hype, like they did, that you're, you're you're gonna you, either you're gonna handle it well or you're not gonna handle it well. But I don't care how good you are, there's always somebody better. I think that's a bummer about. But Ron. you know what? Res respect for her for for taking the payday. I'm 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 glad she's fucking found something that she's. That she can fucking do. I mean, she's still putting her body on the line like a crazy person, but you I, know, hey, get that, get that money, get that recognition. No, you know, no, no hate towards it. Oh no, like, yeah, I, I'm, absolutely. And all love to any of them, any of these fighters or people <clears throat> who can find a career afterwards. I mean, I liked watching Ronda Rousey fight. 
you know, she, she was one of the more exciting fighters to, the, to actually watch, in my opinion, because you had the crowd was with her and wanted to see it. And I, I, I love that type of thing. And as far as Gina, I, if it, like Ryan said, if you can get a payday, why not? As long as it's not against the law and you can, you know, you can kind of sleep <laughs> the night after. Yeah. Yep. And that's yeah. a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Do we? And if you have, I think a, we all ran out of steam at the same yeah. time. So, so do any of you have? So, any of you have a, a final thought, as it were? Uh, be kind to each other. Be kind to each other. Um, Why? Stay safe out there. It was a Jerry Spring, uh, Jerry Springer reference. Yeah, I, I was going to say San and Dimas High School football See. rules, but <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for the California Pride, Jonathan Charney, James, the Fat Man, Stevens, Ryan, who the heck is that? Preston and the old guy, Rob Charney. As always, thank you for listening. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>